Welcome from 2009. A Kurdish boy, 17, named Balil is trying to get to England. He is caught trying to cross over from France into England and now he's stranded in Calais. There he befriends Simon, a local swimming coach at the don't know what that's called in England. Wherever you English. Wherever you go to learn how to swim. And he tries to find ways to get to England. The sheer determination of Balil in this film is absolutely heartbreaking. He desperately tries to find some way of getting to England to his girlfriend Mina. He can hardly get into contact with her. Most of their conversations are second-hand. She doesn't have a cell phone of her own and her father basically controls her life and it doesn't look good for the two but they clearly have very deep feelings for each other and this comes across in spite of the fact that we don't actually see Mina that much in this film and we don't see you know we don't get flashbacks of them together we don't really get a sense of what they're like together but we can still feel that they really really love each other another thing that this goes into is there's a divorce between Simon and his ex-wife and the feelings between them that are still there somewhere blossom a little more in this and that's all I'm gonna say about that in general it is just about the power of love the criminalization of refugees and just the determination of these people to fight against seemingly impossible odds. The acting is excellent. I don't know a single one of these people. It should be noted that everyone who plays someone Kurdish is probably Kurdish or they certainly are from the Middle East. And the people in this all speak the language that makes sense for them to speak in the given situation. The Frenchmen's, the Frenchmen speak French with each other. The, they'll speak English to the Kurds. And when it's just the Kurds together, they'll speak Kurdish. The credibility in general is very, very high for every single aspect of this. The, the details of the laws and the police and the behavior of the characters. I would say that this is somewhat one-sided. This is very much on the side of the refugees, the victims in this situation. But the people on the other side, I mean, we meet a couple of law enforcement people in this and some civilians, some regular people who are also suspicious of the refugees and they don't come off as like evil or something. They come off as human beings, you know. We can tell that the police are just doing their job. They, they kind of have to do, you know, what is in the rule book and the people who are suspicious of the refugees it just comes off as you know the natural xenophobia they're 
scared of something that they don't know exactly what is, that they don't completely understand. The entire approach to the film is spot on. I haven't seen anything else by this director, Philippe Leroux, or something like that. Lioré, sorry. But I will be. I intend to. He completely understands that this story is powerful enough that he doesn't have to manipulate with us. I mean, French cinema is not Hollywood, but there is some manipulation, some overstylization to a bit of it. You know, take Jean Pierre Genoux, for example. And with this, it's just very, very subtle, very underplayed. We are just shown what happens. We don't have any kind of cutting or special angles or something that puts us directly inside the head of the characters. We just see what happens. And I do want to make it absolutely clear, this is extremely well shot and well edited. Very tightly. Although I suppose you could say that it it is maybe a little longer than it needs to be and it doesn't always move entirely fast. There's a bit of the film where it gets a bit tense and this effect is actually lost before we actually find out the result of the situation that we were anxious about. That actually brings me nicely to the music. That one scene where it gets pretty tense is the only time where the music goes away from what it usually is. It gets a bit tense in the music also, but still not manipulative. The majority of the music in this is this very soft, sad piano. Not sappy, just naturally sad piano. And it's almost the voice of the helplessness of the situation that these people are in. I would also say it's a very minimal use of the music. Unless I just did not notice it, in which case it was really, really subtle, there was very little music in this. And, like I said, even when it gets tense that one time, it's still not overbearing. It's always just... almost like sound effects that you would expect, you know? A lot of people don't think about this, but when editing, you often add sound effects that people expect to hear from that location, even if they did not occur naturally when the film, when the scene was filmed. And people don't notice this, and thus they don't think about it. That's because we just expect it to be there, and the music is almost like that. It's just so natural. We don't think about it. What is effective here is the story, the reality. This is one fate, one of millions. And that is why this film is so gripping and so effective. It's, once again, this, this struggle against overpowering odds. And though we may never completely feel like it will work out, we really hope it will. You know, it just, it really gets to you. It really gets to you. I think that's what there is to say as far as the spoiler-free review goes, so... The movie is, like I said, by, one, by now one year old. They were showing it in the library. It didn't even make it to my local cinema, I believe. So, 
if this at all interests you, please watch this movie. It is well worth it. That's it for my spoiler-free review of Welcome. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.